Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen, wowzers, um, 6 o'clock again on a Wednesday, they're coming thick and fast aren't they, it's crazy, absolutely crazy, um, it's good to see you all, everybody joining in now, which is fantastic, um, it's a bit of a funny one this isn't it, um, obviously the people who are, who are here and joining uh, know who we've got on tonight, Andrew Jordan, who's been a quite a fierce competitor uh, in the British Touring Car Championship, especially I've raced against him and I know uh, what the deal is with Andrew and how good he is. Um, and the sad news that uh, he won't be competing in the championship um, this year, so in 2020, which is a, a bit of a nightmare. So, you know, I give him a shout and I said, can you can you come and pop on and, you know, speak to people um, who who really, you know, have loved what you've done for a, for a long, long time in the championship. And um, if it was me, I, I really wouldn't want to be on this show, if I'm honest, um, because I'd be licking my wounds. I'm that kind of person. Um, but at the same time, fair play to Andrew. He said, definitely, yep, yeah, I'll be on. Uh, no worries at all. And then the other flip side as well was that Colin Turkington, um, who is fantastic as well, was supposed to be on. And he's actually... Um, Giving up his uh, his space, he was going to be on with us, and and Andrew is is going to be on tonight, which is fantastic. So, um, I think that's enough from me. Andrew's just requested to be involved, but I think before he comes on, I think there's a few things about Andrew, and that is he's probably one of the most feistiest um, drivers, driven um, amazingly, and uh, and a fantastic champion in 2013. So, let's uh, let's get him involved and. Um, request to be on it and I nearly pressed the wrong one so when I say Andrew Jordan's on I hope it's him because sometimes it, it it could be someone else some random but there he is hello boy how are you <laughs> I'm all right thanks mate I was just saying sometimes randomers request to be on right, right. I'm, I'm one of those <laughs> Do you know when you and I can see you and I'm thinking yeah I've seen it before it's got like three people and I've nearly pressed the wrong one it's like Welcome, uh, I don't know, Josh Cook, and it's like it nearly turns into some random guy who's probably just like that at the screen. Oh, mate. <laughs> <laughs> AJ, um, I, I excuse the not so glamorous backdrop. I'm in my bedroom. <laughs> it's, not, it's not very rock and roll, but it the looks, kids are loud like, downstairs, so I'll come up here. It, it looks like a JRT truck behind you, mate. It looks like one of the no, that's, races. That's my uh, my good old trusty headboard. <laughs> <laughs> Right, we've never we've never had one from someone's bedroom mate that's proper well i was going to do it downstairs but um the kids go to bed in like 45 minutes so it's burn off some steam so oh, yeah, yeah we'll do it up here it'll be nice and quiet That'll i've gone a bit corporate i thought i'd go corporate i thought i'd bring the old shirt so <laughs> i don't blame you mate actually well red bull revive chambers recycling you've had some amazing partnerships mate and still got them i'm assuming yeah it's um you know we all know it's a big part of the sport and um i've had some some of the long the longest standing relationships you know pertec were over 15 years and i'm still part of of um part of me with, as a partner as a personal partner um red bull now six years john guest were over 20 years chambers are up to nearly 20 years now i think or maybe it's over 20 years so um yeah we have a bit of a habit of um getting people on board and keeping them which is is good because it shows we're doing something right and um you know as you know it's the hardest part of the sport so if you can if you can get brands like this involved something like red bull you know i um I didn't think I'd probably get involved with Red Bull, but in in terms of how hard it would be to get in there, and I did, so it's nice to then to then keep them. Um, and I have to say, like all the people I'm involved with, have been so good recently, and um, we're still all working together. And and uh, yeah, they've been very loyal in that sense. So I um, yeah, I appreciate that. <laughs> and I think that you know a lot of people. This is the most people we've ever had that have tuned in, um, and I think most people today. And tonight, um, so I'm not going to keep you too long. Obviously, you want to put your kids to bed. But at the same time, Andrew... That's all right, mate. You keep me as long as you want. I'll get out of that one. <laughs> I've only just got in, so yeah, I'll definitely be having to do it tonight. <laughs> I bet you any money, you'll be talking to yourself in a bit when we finish the show. And like, yeah, yeah, I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, Andrew, the first thing you said to me, mate, when I, when I messaged you about coming on the show, because I didn't expect you to say yes, I'll be honest, because there's a million better things you want to do after you've, um, you know, you, you, you find out you, you, you're not going to be driving or maybe not find out, you come to the conclusion you're not going to be driving. Um, 
you know, you said to me, I said, listen, the fans will want to know, you know, what's happening and how you are and stuff. And, and you were like, what fans are they? And <laughs> it's such a funny comment because I don't think you really realise, mate, how many people out there love what spirit you've got. And you're such a street fighter. I put a tweet out saying we've lost a street fighter. Is, is, how would you explain yourself in touring car terms? Because I think... Um... Anybody that I know should just watch a lap of you round Thruxton in 2012 in drying conditions. Yeah. Cold. It was probably the most mesmerising thing I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, that, that just touched on those times at Thruxton, like 12, 13 and 14, we had pole. And they, they were certainly 13 and 14. They were the most confident I've ever been going into a session that I'd get pole. There was literally no doubt ever in my mind that we would rock up at Thruxton and we'd be quickest in free practice one two and qualifying it was to me it was like yeah that's a done conclude and it sounds cocky but it was just how one I was with the car around there um how would I explain myself I would say um yeah I'd say I'd never give up I'd say I, I've had um some good times and some bad times but I, I what I really enjoyed is, is is bouncing back from a couple of tough years and um I found that a real challenge i'd say i'm probably one of the most mentally strong on the grid and i really enjoyed like last year after donington proving that and winning two races that to me was like yeah that's proper um i would say i think with any sport some people like and some people don't um which always amuses me and uh so i i would would i like myself if i was watching me in touring cars i probably would um but equally, I'd say I'd say sometimes I'd probably say things that I'm sat at home saying on purpose to wind people up, and I'm then hysterical when they bite. So um, yeah, I've always had a bit of fun. I've never taken it too seriously, um, and sometimes I I you know I stoke the fire and, and antagonise just for a bit of fun and self entertainment really. <laughs> would, would would I be right in saying that you're a completely different competitor? now to the one that come in to British Touring Cars at the age of 17, were you? Uh, 18, just 18, yeah. I remember you, Andrew, at, um, I've never told you this, I remember you at the Toker Awards, probably in 2000, <laughs> and, oh, it would have been eight, I think, for the end <laughs> of the first year, and there was just like, I don't, I hope you don't mind me saying this, there was, lot, there, there was a table where you'd been, and... Like, the food was rubbish at the Toker Awards, wasn't it? Like, <laughs> and I remember going, I, I, I ate through it going, I need to drive, I need to drive. Yeah, it's nice, this, and it? it's horrible. You got a pizza in, and yeah. I was like, I thought, oh, that's weird, I remember that. And, and I thought, what? Because I remember going to, James Pickford was there with someone, and I went, who's brought the pizza? And he went, it's Jordan, that. And I went, what a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, and, I often do that because, like, the greatest respect, a lot of the food at these do's is just complete shite, isn't it? And so when you can, I was straight away, I was like, let's get a pizza and order. And, and it's amazing how many friends you get when you've just ordered about 20 pizzas. Uh, you're suddenly then quite popular then. So I've done that on numerous occasions because that sort of food doesn't necessarily, some of it's good and some's not great. So, uh, yeah, but I, I'd say I'm... Um, I, I'm different now in a sense. I'm older, you know. I'm I'm only 31, but I, I feel I've I've done it 12 years. So um, I was quite wild in sense in a sense back then. But I've still I, I'm you know with my kids, I'm the silly one. So I'm I've still I'm still quite young and, and like having a laugh and stuff. But um, but I have to be serious at, at times and toe the line. Yeah, I must admit, and I'm being I'm going to be as honest as you, mate. When I first seen that side of you. Um, not saying that ordering a pizza is bad news, but I just thought that guy, I, 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 that is wicked. That what he's ordering a pizza and just giving zero f's. I thought nice work, but I thought I don't know if he'll ever he'll ever win the championship like that with a with an attitude like that. And you proved so many people and myself so wrong, time and time again, mate. And as the years went on and I watched you, you just become this professional but likable, outspoken person who didn't care what people said on the internet because you would just give it back twice as hard. And I think that's why people like you, mate, because not enough people say exactly what they think. There's only probably you and Plato, really, that I think... Yeah, we... I, I think there's a fine line because you need to toe the line sometimes. Um, 
But sometimes with stuff, if someone's talking complete crap, I'll happily say, you know, it's, social media is great in one sense, and we all know it's a pain in others because it gives people a chance to um, to say a load of crap. And that's what annoys me, if someone's saying completely something wrong, whether it's about me or someone else. Um, I've got no problem with people liking or disliking me. No problem at all. As long as you're talking the truth and, and with facts. So, uh, yeah, and equally, mate, it's sometimes quite funny. So, um, But just on the pizza thing, you say I didn't think you didn't think I'd win the championship by doing that. At the end of last year, uh, Brands, obviously I was a bit... And uh, we went back to the hotel. It was the Thistle. What, what's it now? I don't know what it is. It's nicer than it was now. Yeah, anyway, crazy. no, it's nicer now than it was. Bloody hell. Um, <laughs> and uh, I was like, right, we need to order a pizza. So we got Carl from West Surrey who had um, Dick Bennett's West Surrey card. I was like, yes, because... We know Dick, like, he, he's a great guy, but he likes watching the pennies. Well, not when I'm ordering a pizza. And um, and uh, so, and I remember someone took a picture of it. I just looked bad because I was just, I was pretty drained from the day. I was sat in this chair with a few beers. And I just looked like this guy that was just pizza. With some of my mates there, just, and someone took a picture and I was just like, just because I felt I've had a bit of a crap day and I'm just gorging on pizza now. <laughs> so yeah, I never get told. It's for fully, fully pizza gate, don't we? Um, and it's interesting what you say, isn't it, about Dick Bennett? Because they run such a, a fantastic organisation. And I think going back to what you said about towing the corporate line and things, I never knew if it had worked with BMW with you, but you become a massive favourite with BMW. And I know that for a fact. They absolutely loved that someone could come in and get people a bit edgy. Like we did Q&As and people were on the edge of the seat because they just, they're not that they didn't know what you were going to say. They knew what you were going to say. They just didn't know how you were going to put it. And that was the great thing where it, people go around the houses, but you were a full-on wind-up merchant, mate. And BMW. Well, I, rem I remember there's one and we were talking about Boost or some, well, whatever. And I was like, oh, I really love, and, and people, and I was like, oh, I just love people making people moan. And everyone was like, that's a bit weird. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, I didn't mean like that. I meant moan as in. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that was quite amusing. I remember a classic, I don't know what year it was, was it 12 or 13? I was at Rockingham and someone said, have you seen what Andrew Jordan's written in the programme? Was it something to do with... Um, I <laughs> it was something not great, mate. Matt James had written it or something. and you. <laughs> you thought, do, you, do you know what I'm on about? No, I have no idea. I'll try and find it out. It was something like... Um, what, what, that was it. If you, were in, if you were in government, what would you allow or what would you bring back or something like that? And yours was like something to do with the outdoors and people, mate. I was like, all oh, right. <laughs> I was like, why would he say that? Oh, well, if you've got a platform, then use it. Exactly, mate. <laughs> and that's exactly what it was about, wasn't it? And it worked well with the Red Bull uh, athlete thing as well, didn't it? And uh, they must have loved your, the, the time with you and still do, obviously. It's, it's great, isn't it? Yeah, it was... Um, a lot of people thought I only got them because I won the championship. But I actually signed... I went and signed the contract with them two weeks before the finale in 2013. So um, that was a case of just... You know, they're one of the biggest brands in the world, you know, they're, they're huge. So for me to, to get involved with them was a lot of hard work and, and something I'm obviously still am and I've always been very proud um, proud to do it. it it's you know, a lot of drivers aspire to have a Red Bull crash helmet because that is, it is cool. So, um, yes, uh, 2014 was the first year with them and um, it's quite nice. Like uh, initially they're very set on how the crash helmet has to be and then they let you start having elements of your own design in there which is um was always really really cool and you get the free clothes the cool clothing and stuff like that so um but yeah as a, as a brand to be associated with for me personally is brilliant but also then it brings a lot to the party for my other um partners that you're then involved with red bull so um yeah that's a big a big part of it for me and can I take you back to um, the Toka package, the first time you ever uh, drove on the Toka package? And I remember you pitching up um, in Clio's in 07. And I remember thinking, because I knew your dad pretty well from British Touring Cars, because he was driving in the Integra back then. And um, 
your dad tried to help me out actually because I was racing Porsche Carrera Cup in a guest round and he, he said give me a shout if you want to know try and learn how to drive a Porsche I should have rang him anyway you were in the clear <laughs> You were in a Clio at Brands Hatch, and I remember, and you were very young, mate. I remember thinking, my word, there was about 8,000 cars on the grid. Do you remember that? Was there like was, two- I think there was, there was um, 42 cars, I think, and, and we had to have qualifying races. So the qualifying races were, nearly, were always dull because everyone just wanted to finish. And then the main race was just mental, <laughs> absolutely mental. And, um, Second, I think, in the first round. Yeah, I was to Ed Peed. Yeah, jeez. No, uh, Ed Peed or Martin Byford, one of the two. Um, yeah, I was second. And then had a bit of a, a rough time mid-season, just got in the pack and, and, uh, and stuff. And we actually, um, we stopped doing it a couple of rounds from the end because we knew I was going to be in touring cars the year after. And um, I had quite a few points on my licence. And some of them were actually at Donington from after the chequered flag. I'd had some contact with someone, um, or that I should say they'd had contact with me. <laughs> and I remember my dad said he was stood at Redgate, and when everyone was slowing down, I entered Redgate like I was on a qualifying lap to try and get to <laughs> the person, and then had some argy bargy. So after that, he said, Look, we need to stop because you're going to get your license taken off you before we even get to Touring Cars. So. Hey, that's about who was it? Can I ask? <laughs> it was um, Jim Edwards. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Edwards Sr. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it was um, it was quite. It, I love it that you can look back at stuff like that, and it's uh, yeah, quite funny. That's brilliant. Jim would have loved that as well. He was quite feisty with him getting there. Yeah, it probably wasn't even his. I can't remember what happened, but there was some contact, and I was obviously just hot-head seventeen-year-old. Thought, oh, I'll show him. Drove yeah. into him on this. Yeah, did more damage on the slowing down lap than I did in the race. Throwing pizzas at him out the window. <laughs> 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 but it, yeah. it was. It was amazing because the next year in the Integra, what a fantastic car that was. We, I think I ended up with your old car and it was just a brilliant car. And to learn in as well, a, fa- a fantastic car. And to be with your dad, you, I'm sure you pipped him in the championship in your first year by by a few points, did you not? Yeah, I, I think I did. I, I actually feel a bit sorry for him that year because he was having to drive himself. He was having to deal with me. And I was just like... I, I lost count how many front bumpers I did that year. It was just a typical kind of newcomer who could drive a car quite quick, but was just out of control from the start to the finish. Um, and then we just we spent way too much budget that year, so he had the financial worries as well. So he didn't really get a fair crack at the whip in terms of the driving that year. Um, but it was good. It was a cracking car. We obviously got it from, um, from Matt and Steve Neal because Dad had been driving or had the Integra for two years. And uh, I remember, you know, Matt, Matt's a good friend of ours and um, Dad brought an M3 E30 off him, I don't know, when I was really small. And uh, we went to them and said, look, we want to buy the car. I think it was Gordon's old one. And uh, we said, look, we can't afford to pay for it now. And Steve and Matt said, don't worry about it. Take it, start testing, get out there and just pay us when you can. So, um, you know, I always smile when people... As I said, sport, everyone has fans and everyone has people that don't like them. But whenever someone writes something bad about Matt Neal, I always have a little smile because I know what a genuine uh, genuine guy used to do something like that. You know, I can't remember what it was, whether it was £80,000 pound car or 100, I, don't, I don't know what it was back then. Um, but still, to let us go out and uh, and to start driving it before we paid for it was, um, yeah, very, very trustworthy. I think you're dead right there, mate. And I'll put my two pennies worth in as well because Matt has been nothing but a gentleman when I've had stuff going on and he's he basically in 2006 when your dad had a terrible accident at Silverstone I was in that race doing the two last rounds at Brands and Silverstone and I wouldn't have been on the grid if it wasn't for Matt Neal he he gave me Fujifilm money and TomTom money which really yep. upset me because I think he wanted it but uh <laughs> but he got me the money because I needed five grand to do the, the racing and he said I said mate you can, I don't need that much and he said you just keep Keep it, mate. Absolutely fine. And that's that sums up him, doesn't it? Sums up Matt Neal. It does. I remember um, Steve Neal absolutely ripped me a new one once at Donington. There. Oh my God! I done. Um, it was in 2012, so we brought the Civics off them. And uh, I think going up to McLean's, we'd had a bit of a. There was a gaggle of cars, and I'd gone for a bit of a move, and it meant Matt was going, went in the gravel, broke his suspension, and he was leading the championship. 
And uh, after the race, I'd gone to the motorhome, showered, and <laughs> I walked up the side of the truck and saw Steve stood with, I think, my dad. And I walked, and I, because I hadn't thought I'd done anything wrong, and I just went up and I'm like, all right, Steve? And he literally, in front of people, like, ripped into me. And I was like, oh, like, I, I hadn't realised I'd done anything wrong. So, um, yeah, yeah, and it, like, in front of people, I was like, oh, man, like, I really got told off. So then, because I was trying to play the long game with, with Honda at the time, I had to go in, which was really awkward, into Barry, Matt. And Matt was actually all right about it, but it was just the way I walked up to Steve Neal. And he was probably like, who's this cocky little brat? So I was just like, all right, Steve. Like... <laughs> <laughs> and pe people were like looking as I was there going, yeah, so, yeah. sorry, Steve. Yes, Steve. <laughs> hey, I, think, I think you're not the only person that's been on the receiving end of Matt's dad, Steve, but his leather jacket <laughs> coming down. Give it at the biggest. Oh, <laughs> Uh, that is amazing. It it is. It's it's phenomenal though. What uh, what's happened for your career? And I remember as well. Again, I come back into the championship in '09, um, and by that time you were at VX Racing. Um, but and I and I've never spoken to you about this either, mate. And I might be saying the wrong thing here, but there was rumours around the paddock. Um, we talk about you know not being able to drive and stuff. That deal nearly went pear shaped, didn't it? With the factory Vauxhall team. I, I was told, but and it was a difficult time to get, you know, on the grid with Triple Eight. Yeah, well, we were actually going to run um, an independent Vectra from Triple Eight was the plan with John Guest on board. Um, and we literally, I remember, we, me and Dad had been to see Ian Harrison and we'd signed the contract. And literally, as we pulled out of there, Dad had had a load of missed calls from someone like John Guest. I'm like, that's not right. And then some missed calls from my, my mum saying, look, you need to ring the guests. And I remember the lay-by we pulled up just down from where Triple Eight were. And it was when the recession hit in 2008, or at the end of 2008, start 2009. And he just said, um, and we'd never had, we never had a contract with John Guest. So they were very much, no, we do it on a shake, shake your hands. And we'd been with them, I don't know, 15 years at the time. And you've got to think they'd been paying for two touring cars. So it's a lot of money just on a handshake. But that's... That's fine if that's how you work. I wouldn't do it these days, but and um, so then we had to try and factor a deal in. Then we we already had Persk on board, so we grew them a little bit to go as a as a works car rather than an independent um, car, which was it was an all right year. It was um, the it was great to be in with Fabrizio and Matt. That was really cool, and um, but it was again I was I was very young in that sort of scenario and I could put a quick lap together but just their experience um but that was my first time of getting a company car so it was cool in that sort of sense but, are, you, um, are you laughing because someone's just thrown you under the bus about the handbrake <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, yeah that, that's my that's one of my best friends and uh, <laughs> yeah we've had many a good experience um <laughs> yeah but uh, yeah so that that was the first company car I um I had and uh but in the end of the year, Vauxhall had said they were pulling out and things kind of changed a bit there. You know, the, the whole, you know, Fabrizio and Matt take me out of the equation as an unproven quantity. Um, they were struggling to even kind of qualify anywhere near where they should. So, uh, yeah, that was a bit of a, a bit of a, um, is my first experience driving for another team and stuff, the good sides and the bad sides. So it was, uh, it was tough then to go and after a tough year, get Persk on board as primary sponsorship. And uh, how that used to work is we had to go and present. It's a franchise company, so we had to go and present uh, to all of the franchisees and they'd do a majority vote. And um, I remember the the old CEO, who's now a really good friend, and the year we won the championship, he all took us out um, for a meal, spent, I think, a few thousand pounds on the food. Like, so he was a proper cool guy. And um, I got a picture of my um, my partner, with him asleep leaning like this and this is the chair <laughs> i've got some pictures somewhere of us all behind him like this <laughs> anyway um he, he doesn't work there anymore um <laughs> and uh, he actually when we presented he stood up and said he disagreed and they shouldn't do the sponsorship and at that point i remember in one of them my dad stood back up and said no i completely disagree and i was like oh jesus and uh, and we think oh. because he wasn't that pop this chairman wasn't that popular at the time and because he said they shouldn't, they were like bollocks and we'll do it and go against you. So, and to be fair to him, he then 
for years after said I was completely wrong. It was the right decision to go to go with it. So um, and he was then very help through, helpful through my time at Pertec. And uh, yeah, as I say, he um, you know it's quite cool to have a ch- uh, see, chairman um, take us all out, get drunk, and eat lots of nice food after we just. There's a picture of him on the podium, and my number one mechanic Jack at the time is literally emptying a bottle of champagne over the pert at chairman and he's just loving it I was like yeah that's if you can uh, if you can deal with people like that then you're, you're on to a winner oh wait, that's, i remember jack actually he was good at football i think he proper double foot tackled me on a charity match i was like who's that and i seen his head he was like all right mate i went oh yeah yeah he, he, he no I, re- I remember i remember like, like um back in the single days i tell you what you all the grid girls were after jack and uh because he's a good looking lad and um yeah, but so he started with um, with my dad, I think, when he was 15. So to then, he was my number one mechanic when we won the championship. That was, uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was cool. I remember that, mate. And it was a great, it was a great effort. And I'm going to skip a bit now to, to 2013 and you, and you won that championship. And it was, it was an interesting start, wasn't it, to the year? I remember <clears throat> um, you had a good friend, didn't you? Ryan Lawford, who... Um, unfortunately commit suicide and you still to this day have a, a I can remember a sticker on the back of your hands device that you know he's still with us um how difficult was that mate to start a year especially a vet you must have knew you're on for the championship and to start that must have been hard work mate yeah that that was that was um I don't know I get kind of goosebumps now thinking about it because um yeah that was I remember when I was in America actually when when that happened. We were I was testing for a race at Daytona, and uh, yeah, it's just you know we'd been with him at the dinner dance, the Toker Awards, you know, a couple of weeks before, and knew nothing of how he was feeling. So um, on that, I know you do a lot on on social media about people's mental state and stuff, and and we all should, you know, it's um, when you've been that close to him, to someone that does it, and you don't suspect to think it's horrible. So uh, that was a tough start to the year for all of us, um, but there weren't there weren't no I wasn't win- there was no way I wasn't winning that championship with what that happened. You know, it was just simple. It was, um, and yeah, it made it even more special. And I still speak to his his parents, and um, yeah, it, it, it it's it's crazy. It's um, yeah, it, it's just sad. So uh, yeah, to to win it with what had happened that made it even more kind of emotional because that was, he should have been a part of that. And he was, you know, I'd known him since 2005 when I started Rallycross. That's where I met him through Will Gollop, the Rallycross legend who I then got um, very friendly with and and worked with and and drove for him. So, um, yeah, we had some, uh, there there was a kind of group of us like Jack, uh, me, Craig, who's now McNeil's number one, um, Adam, who was, who is my, best mate is my brother-in-law um uh, my mate james and it was like you know all of us were it was just a group of mates going out there and dominating the toughest championship in the country frankly that year and it was just i don't know it was just fun it was it was fun and uh i i think i would never be able to replicate that sort of feeling and i felt really at home at west surrey obviously but that just doing it with a group of mates I worked with them every day in the workshop. That was, uh, yeah, that was proper. But I tell you what, there's some good stories. <laughs> proper good stories. <laughs> I, I, can, I can only imagine, mate. But I think it was one of the best finals we've ever seen. I know there's been some amazing finals over the years, but I remember it was horrendously wet. You'd had contact with Aaron Smith and someone else had had an accident at Surtees going on the Grand Prix loop in, on round two. You'd broke your suspension and you'd had like a 50-point lead from Rockingham where you proper schooled everyone in the wet, I remember, I yeah. think. Yeah, and, I'll tell you uh, what, that race in the wet, like you say, schooled them. And do you know what that was? That was the track walk we did on Friday night in the wet. It was the longest track walk I have ever done. But we went every corner and it was pissing down. And it was feeling every bit of grip, every, every little bit of grip where it was, where it wasn't. And it pays off. Some people probably I'm... come to the arse to walk the track in the rain. But we were there with umbrellas, trying to keep our paper dry to make my notes. And surprise, surprise, it rained. Looked at my notes, oh. right, I know where the grip is, I'm going, see you later. So it just oh, shows you've got to put the homework in at times. I, I, do you know why I remember, I remember that? Because I seen what was happening and I was like, 
Why, why is nobody else following Jordan? You were like, <laughs> it was me. easy. It was <laughs> <honestly>. <laughs> and then turning yeah. <laughs> so easy. But the thing with that, like you see, if Verstappen do it in F1, like extreme wet lines, the thing is, if you're the only one doing it, it feels weird because you're like, well, no one else is doing it. But I remember like after the first lap, I had just gone and I was like, this is easy. And no one's, no one's cottoning on to that. I'm driving what looks like it's my first ever time on track. And I'm, I'm just pulling away. So that was, uh, yeah, it, you've got to put the work in and stuff like that. It was unreal. I remember it. And it, do you know, it was Danny Buxton. You know Danny Buxton. So yeah. Danny Buxton, McLaren now, uh, the drive team. But he was a brilliant Clio Cup driver. And he rang me up the next day and went, did you see Jordan? Why wasn't anyone else following Jordan? He gets all <laughs> angry. He, he's there racing with you. And I said, I know. Like, because I... The boys in that championship are proper people, mate. And like, even like shedding and people like that, you just look like you were in a different category. Look like you had Beeler's old Audi A4 four wheel drive car, mate. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it was, it was unreal. And I, I want to ask you actually about the same year um, and something that you were doing at Silverstone, which your dad probably, his, his nutsack was probably in his mouth, mate. You were trying to race Jason Plato. Like, you didn't need to, mate. You didn't need to. But I think that kind of summed up your year, didn't it? You you were having a go, mate, and Plato loved it. That was proper. That was. i tell you what. I've got a lot of respect for Jason. And um, sometimes he says things and he thinks, oh, shut up. And other times you go, yeah. And But as a, as, a, as a kind of role model of how to make touring cars work for you, fair play. And that rate, right, I remember we'd gone... We'd start like at Snetterton, we, everyone was normally going soft tyre race three. And we started throwing the, it around a bit. And we won Snetterton race two. And Silverstone was one that we gambled. And I remember we sat at, uh, we went out for dinner on the Friday night. And we said, because the Honda was really bad in a straight line that year. So we said, if we can come out with our points gap only halved, we'd have had a good day. As it was, we extended it. But that, um, yeah, that race, I was on the soft, he wasn't. And the car was just brilliant. And um, I got past him and he just nibbled me wide. At, I should, you know, in my, we should, we had the pace to win that race. And um, he nibbled me wide, got past. Then I tried, I was going to send him at Luffield because I thought, no, I've, I can't get into a ding dong with him. So I need to, I need, I need to send him out of the way and I'm gone. <laughs> and uh, they were all on the radar, like, <laughs> like, calm down. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, and then I tried to get up to him at Luffy and I couldn't. And that was some of the best race craft I'd seen from anyone in my 12 years of doing it. He had it sussed. It took one time for me to get the undercut on him at Cops, which is where the soft tyre was really giving me the advantage when I passed him. Could I? I could try dropping back down the pit straight eight lengths to try and get a run onto him. No, he'd have it stopped there. Everything I tried, he got it covered. And uh, so, yeah, it was a lucky escape because we had a tyre rub from the contact and I remember that right rear tyre was really really cut after the race so uh, yeah it, that could have gone wrong but it was uh, it was a classic um, JP kind of master class in how to defend it was good yeah especially in that snot rocket MG in a straight line <laughs> did like a thousand mile an hour it had to have like a Kevlar front didn't it because it was like <laughs> yeah <laughs> not when you drove it though following a few years um, it is a, yeah, let's not talk about that. Bloody hell. Oh, mate. Um, but it was, what a great year. What a great championship. Um, and did, you know, I want to ask you about your dad, Mike. Multiple GT champion, Carrera Cup, uh, British GT, done a lot of Blanc Pan. Proper guy, knows his stuff. Looks like he's been a guiding light for you. Um, have you ever thought you're a bit of a hindrance now or has that never ever ever crossed your mind because it never looks like you have a crossword at all like like steve neil and matt neil i assume they do no not at all um and i think people have a perception of kind of racing dads and stuff and uh the 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 good side and bad side of us having done it before we know if the job's been done properly or not and if it's not then we've got reason to moan so i'm sure a couple of years or certainly one year after moving from the family team we'd have been known as moaners. But we'll only moan if the job's not getting done correctly. You know, if there's no reason to moan, we're happy-go-lucky people and we'll go with it. So, um, you know, at West Surrey, he was very much... It's good because he's driven. 
he can go out in free practice and he'll come up and just we just chit chat and he might say oh, Colin just does a little bit of this or whatever and it's great because it's I wouldn't say a driver coach but he's he's been there and done it so he'll know how I'm feeling before a race and and to be fair though the last couple of years certainly last year he'd be spending more time in the motor home with the grandkids and uh, you know it's nice we've got such a good relationship i know he's there if i want to speak to him but equally i don't feel i have to go and speak to him because he's there so uh yeah it, it works very well he's um obviously giving me lots of advice in terms of um on track stuff but how to be a good person how to do things correctly how to deal with people correctly and how to um be proper to deal with in terms of the business aspect and the sponsorship thing you know Pertec and John Guest, frankly, they were with him first and, and then I kind of progressed that on. Uh, he was always, look, always over-promise and under no, under-promise, over-deliver because that way you'll never annoy anyone. They'll always feel they're getting good value for money because it's so easy. You see people, you know, promise people the world and they don't deliver it. So, um, yeah, he's been uh, a good guidance all, all around. No, that's amazing, mate. And it must be great to be in business with him, you and your dad, with Jordan Race Team, the historics, the numerous and silly amounts of wins you've had at Goodwood and the historic stuff. It, it's a dream, isn't it, mate? It's a dream. It is. And, um, you know, he's 62 now and he still drives bloody quick, like really quick. So um, we're actually going tomorrow to Silverstone to have a go in our mini just for a bit of fun, um, which is quite nice. He said, look, look, you've had a bit of a crap week. Let's go out and just go and have a drive or something. So that would be good. Um, but it's good because we're in business. We never, never have any cross words. Never, you know, probably the last week there was times we, we didn't disagree, but it was frosty because there was a lot going on and we were trying to get the best way around it. Um, but no, never have cross words. Never. That's good to hear, mate, because there's a lot of racing people out there who have dads who are a nightmare. Luckily for yeah. me, my, my dad was a taxi driver. He, he thought that touring cars were turbocharged, supercharged and four-wheel drive. He just thought they were the best of everything. So, <laughs> like, sounds like a uh, sounds like a Caligas car from uh, Tom Chilton. They were quick, weren't they? They were quick. <laughs> I was going to say to you, actually, your first win at Croft 2010, Father's Day? Yeah, Father's Day. And I remember it being Father's Day. I remember you, 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 were, you had the gas cars behind you, the colour gas cars of Onslow Coal, I think it was probably second. Um, and you had the Swindon engine in, which is the, the engine that people use for new uh, generation touring car engines. The Swindon, uh, it's an old Vauxhall engine, isn't it? That's a great partnership, wasn't it? How did that come about? Because it was cost effective, really. The S2000 engines were so highly strained and had to have such regular rebuilds. So we were the first people to go with the Swindon Toker engine, which had, it was hard work. It was a pretty crap year in terms of engine reliability because we were the kind of guinea pig. But we had two wins that year. Um, probably had a bit of help along the way because it needed to look good because Toker were obviously trying to sell that as an idea into the championships. So uh, but still got first two wins and... Um, yeah, that's always a good to get the, the monkey off the back. And yeah, that was on Father's Day. Then I won at Croft last year, which was Father's Day. So um, yeah, Croft has always held... Um, it, it's probably not one of my favourite tracks to drive, but it's always, you know, rally cross or, or um, touring cars. I always had a, a few wins there. Yeah, it's always a pretty abrasive place, isn't it? I always struggled with it. It was always a nightmare. The Integra was good round there because the Integra was good on its tyres, I remember. It was, it was pretty cool. Um Andy, what about, can I ask you about um, two years in particular, 2015 and 16, the MG, fifth in the championship, mate, I thought I couldn't believe it when I looked. You were always there, you were all the way there to the end of the year, consistently chipping away, which you've always done when I've looked at point situations. You're always consistently there, need, needing to be at the top and consistently getting points in. Wasn't the best of cars that was it when you got there, and also I remember Indicator Gate at Brands Hatch, um, which just sent social media wild, and I couldn't really get why everybody was so annoyed at that. I think everyone. Well, was... I'll tell, shall I tell you why I did that? Why I indicated so obviously? Uh -huh. Well, when I joined MG, there was an engineer there uh, that was going to be my engineer, and if I'm all in with someone, I'm all in. So. I gave over all my Honda data, all my Honda damper builds, everything we had on the Honda diff spec builds, because I thought we're in it. Let's see what might work on the MG. 
Well, funny enough, he left the next week to go with Plato. So that obviously pissed me right off. So, um, so, and my engineer, who's my brother-in-law and best mate, he said, if you ever get the chance to screw them over, make it as apparent as you can. Surprise, surprise, championship finale. I had a chance to help someone out. So I indicated to make it obvious. But that was the, that was the whole reason behind it. Like, it, it was, uh, there's some things you don't do and you don't, um, you know, you don't do that. So, uh, yeah, uh, that's you know, how that ended. Fair play to you, mate, because I never knew that. But also, the, the internet, well, they know now, mate, because the grief you got for that, I was like, I think you need to be a bit steady on and try driving a championship touring car and knowing the politics. People don't, do they? Nah, but my, my brother-in-law, I, I literally got back to the truck and was like, good, glad I did that. And uh, it was nothing against Plato, it was the other guy. And uh, my brother-in-law was like, brilliant, that's what we needed to do. I think he'd have actually stuck one on him if he'd ever seen him again, because that was my brother-in-law, he'd put, who was my engineer, put so much work into that year. And I actually asked him, you know, it was our kind of property, but I said, look, and he said, yeah, go, like, you know, you need to try and make better if there's anything you can learn from the honda onto the mg you can have everything i've still got it on my laptop i've still got all the honda diff spec damper shim build specs springs damper settings everything and he had everything and then left which is uh yeah that's not how you conduct yourself in my opinion but anyway so uh, yeah that was what the whole indicate indicator gate was about <laughs> hey i absolutely love that and you know what i i'd be fully with you as well because for you guys to beat the factory Honda team of Shedden, who I rate massively, mate, and I'm sure you do as well, beat them on their own turf, in their own car, you were obviously doing something special and it wasn't just the driving. It's yeah. that you put a lot of effort into that. I remember hearing that you guys completely rebuilt that car before the brand's GP round. And I know that you do that anyway every weekend, but you changed every bolt to get the job done. Yeah, we spent... Any profit we'd have earned that year was spent on the car before brands. New, four new gears, new drive shafts, new clutch, everything. And and that's that's when you're doing it yourself, you know. And um, that's when winning overalls profit. You know, we might have earned a little bit of profit that year, but it all went because you have one chance sometimes to win a championship, and and that was our chance. So we took no um, cut no corners with that. Um, but yeah, it was uh, it was a cool it was a cool way to end the year. But it it just goes to show you put the the money in uh, in the right areas, and then it pays off. You know, you could have gone there, nothing would have broken. But if you had, you'd have kicked yourself for not spending that extra I don't know, fifteen twenty thousand pounds to to do it properly. Definitely, and that's where the championship was and still is at this time. It's it every little bit helps, doesn't it? Um, don't want to take too much of your time, Andy. I'll just speak to you about BMW. 2017, 18 and 19, three excellent years, I'd say. You must be very proud of what you've done. Um, taking Pertec there, looked amazing. What about going there? You must have been like, I could match Collard, probably beat him, won't be a problem. Colin could be difficult. What was your thought process behind going there? Because when I, I know that Colin wasn't announced before you went there, I don't think. But you must have had an, an idea he was going to be about. But Collard, he rubs people up the long, wrong way. And I actually really like Rob. Now I don't race against him because we didn't have very good times. But you've had some run-ins with Rob Collard. And I think your dad might have done as well. So am I lying here? <laughs> <laughs> no, but to be fair, we used to... I remember um, at Rockingham when we were teammates in 2017, I think it was. Right, I really like Rob. I, I do really like him. And... Um, he was behind, and I remember he just hit me at the apex of every corner. And I, I was, so I started up on the radio, like, look, either hit me and fire me off, or just stop hitting me, because it's just annoying me now. And I remember I saying, if he does that one more time, then that's fine, gloves off. He did it one more time, and we had a right argy bargy. And I, we were all obviously ranting. And um, Graham Greaves, CEO of BMW UK, he had a headset on. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, he heard it all. Um, but there's times like that you have to stand your ground but yeah when I signed there I thought um I knew Colin was going to go there and obviously I thought it was going to be tough but I'm not I'll never shy away from competition if someone does a better job than me then fair enough but I'm not one that's going to go and look for a drive where I'm not going to get challenged by a teammate so um and frankly you're not going to go against anyone tougher than Colin 
on pace on professionalism or over a season so um it was tough like the first year i could kind of do a quick lap but it just i'd driven front wheel drive for so long it uh the real well i won it the first weekend with colin right behind so that was like well that's a good way to enter a team but then it was just a bit up and down um real wheel drive wasn't it just didn't come naturally that year and started to progress on 2018 was better still a bit up and down um but i felt on pace kind of caught against Col uh, colin you looked at the numbers and i'd out qualified him more than he had me so i thought now we're making progress obviously 2009 i, I felt we were r right where i would expect to be and where where we should have been yeah it, i think in particular 19 looked to me as a pundit and someone outside looking in it looked like the two years you'd spent with Dick Bennett's, he'd started to turn the corner of it, not just being Colin Turkington, Colin Turkington, Colin Turkington. He seemed to really listen to you because to me, you're both the same kind of people, very meticulous in what you do. You love the engineering side of things. And 2019, the new three series looked amazing. And I think you knew it was game on, didn't you? When you went out the garage. Yeah, the first. I did. I have to say when I signed with, with West Surrey, I thought it was going to be the Colin Turkington show. And it wasn't what I expected. I, you know, Dick was very fair and he took everyone's point on board. So it wasn't like that. Um, but certainly 19, I felt, you know, Dick's come out and said that no one's ever pushed Colin within the same team as much as I have, um, which is nice. You know, I, you know, I don't want to beat them. I don't want to push them. But it, it, it's, um, I felt very much part of the team. And, and Dick, you know, because I was always in a separate garage. I was in the third garage because I was in the Persec team or side of the team. And... Uh, during a lot of the practice sessions and stuff, Dick would spend a lot of time in our garage because we'd be going well. And you're suddenly then you think, yeah, they're, they're taking notice of what we're doing on this side of the garage as well. So, um, but yeah, I was 2019 felt very much part of it. I've got a great relationship with Dick. Uh, he's a lovely guy. Like I did when I signed there, I did wonder what he would be like in terms of if you make a mistake or if you're having a bad day, how he would deal with that. I thought it'd be very hard because of the people he's worked with completely the opposite he was very much he i never felt with him and i've been at teams before where you feel if you're not on the pace they think it's because of you dick was always what can we do with the car to make it better for you it was never like oh you're just tugging around today never ever it was always he almost he felt like i always felt like he's got full belief if i've got the car where i want it we'll go and be right up at the front if we're not right up at the front he would think there's something with the car that I'm not quite happy with. And so that was, um, that was a nice feeling that I didn't feel those pressure from, from him in that sense. What did he say to you after it had all finished at Brands Hatch and you'd missed out by nothing? What did he say to you? Uh, I think he felt sorry for me. Um, he said, I spoke to him on the phone the other day and, uh, he said, realistically, he should have been the champion last year, but um, I wasn't. So, uh, you know, it, I, I spoke to him. A, I've spoke to him a lot, I, I, you know, and um, it, I think he thinks he knows where I was at last year. Uh, he said the other day, he likes I just get on with it, get the job done. Uh, there's no baggage. There's no faffing. There's no hangers on. There's nothing. You know, I come, I do the job. Nice to the people I work with. Have a good laugh like to think I bring a bit of buzz and energy and some good fun with everyone I work with and I go home and I have a moan now and then if I'm not happy but then that's said and done and I'm good to go again so uh, yeah I, I I think I like to think he's like working with me and I've definitely liked working with him he's um, yeah you know he's a friend of mine now absolutely yeah and talking of phone calls Andrew one of the first people that you've spoken to and I'm, a, I'm a guessing that's that's been pretty cool with you is Colin Turkington he's a, he's a class act isn't he yeah he yeah uh, he really is and he's obviously very fast very meticulous I struggle to tell you what he's feeling if he's had a good or bad event yeah he's just very and um he, he rang me yesterday and um which was really nice of him and we had a phone call for probably 25 minutes and we were laughing about some of the um the fun we had together last year and uh I actually said, look, you know, I said some things last year to try and wind the whole thing up and have some fun. And I said, it's just all part of the game. And uh, we both said, look, we've pushed each other on. And so it was, it was really, you know, he's, you know, 
he stands a good chance this year of beating the record and becoming the most successful touring car driver of all time. And so to to have respect from him is uh, is very cool. Yeah. And do you think that do you think he's going to go away thinking dodged a bullet there, mate, or do you think he'll be a bit disappointed that he isn't going to get pushed? That not that's not disrespectful towards Tom Oliphant. I mean, knowing the caliber of a champion that you are. Um. There might be a bit of him that thinks I may, you know, it's one less title challenger he's got to fight. But I do think someone like that will be, you know, if that was me and he'd gone, I'd think, oh, there's a bit of a challenge gone there, but I'm not going to have, you know, we were looking at thousands against each other last year. It, it was so close on data. It would ebb and flow all around the lap, you know, we'd have different techniques. But you'd look at the lap time every time. You know, I, I'd always feel in free practice one and two, I'd have him beat. And then qualifying, he was very good of just just eking out a little bit more, which would then bring it close. You know, I would, last year, if I'd get out after free practice one and he was within two or three tenths, I'd be annoyed. But then qualifying, he can then bring the gap closer or, or sometimes just in front. So um, we've learned a lot and pushed each other on. And he said to me yesterday, he said, look, that's why we hit the ground running as much as we did, because we both are just, we're, we're both on it. and." Um, don't get me wrong, at the end of last year, it was awkward. It was like in the truck, it was awkward. Um, yeah, but that's part of it, you know. And Silverstone, we we fought really hard. And then that was definitely awkward. But we, we didn't, we didn't, um, we didn't cross the line. So uh, I think that's, that shows just enough respect. And I'd thought before the final round, before the finale, if the chance was there, and I'm not going to lie, the question went through my head, if the chance was there, would I park him in the gravel to win the championship? And I thought, no, I wouldn't, because he wouldn't do that to me, and uh, we should race with respect. So, um, yeah, that, that goes both ways. Yeah, and I think that's exactly what happened in the championship year, and it was, it was amazing to watch two sports people at the top of their game pushing super hard, um, and the but just just question. just on that, just on parking the gravel thing. So after race two at Brands, when Colin had been um, had been uh, hit with by Matt, <laughs> people was like obviously kicking off and all sorts. And someone said, "Oh, someone needs to do the same to Dan." And someone said, "Well, who would do it?" And I was like, "Well, I'll do it, but I'll be perfectly honest. I'm only going to do it if it benefits me." I said, "No offense, Colin." I'm not going to put someone in the gravel to help you win the championship because we're still both fighting. As it is, I wouldn't have put Dan in the gravel. You know, I'm not that sort of person. But it was, uh, it was quite funny. There was a bit of a talk going. I was like, well, I'm not going to take a load of rubbish on the internet for winning the championship by putting someone in the gravel. If I'm helping Colin do it, I'll do it for myself. But I, I wouldn't have if it came to it. That's amazing, mate. There'd be pizzas and indicators getting broken off. Left <laughs> oh, mate. But like I said, the million dollar question, a lot of people have tuned in tonight. So many, this double the amount of people we usually get. This shows how popular I think that, you know, you are, mate. Um, what's what's going to go on? What's happened? Um, is it a situation where it can be rectified? Is it just one of those things, mate, and we move on? Um, it, it's, it's not good. It's rubbish, isn't it? But it's um, it's all on good terms and... and you know, to be fair, I've not seen anything twisted in the press to make it that uh, there's been a fallout because there hasn't. And um, it's just not meant to be this year. It's um, and I will be completely honest. There's still a drive for me there. There's still an offer for me there from uh, to drive BMW and with West Surrey. That was still there. But how it was going to work out pre-COVID is different to how it was going to work out post lockdown. And I've done this long enough. And I've, you know, it's so hard to earn a living in British touring cars. It isn't like it was in the super touring days. You've got to be shrewd. You've got to be sharp. And I've managed to earn a living from it. And I've done what I wanted to do was that I wanted to make sure when touring cars stopped, I had some, I didn't want to get to the end of it and go, ah, what do I do now? So I've been smart with how I've done things. Um, we've got a really busy business. And it just came to the point that the ball was in my court. The the question was down to me, and I said, you know what? No, I'm not going to put what I've earned or what I've worked for in jeopardy to do one more season. So um, it was the toughest call I'd, I've ever made, and I made the call on Friday not to. And over the weekend, I felt horrible in the sense I just felt ill with it because 
I feel much better now it's out there, you know, it's, um, so, uh, yeah, it, it's just, you know, I don't want to say probably what I should, because people can take things the wrong way. It just, what was going to work before this all happened just won't work for me now. And I'm not, it's not fair on, I've got a fiance and two kids. It's not fair to put what we've got here. I'm just not going to do it. There comes a point you go, no, how it would have worked beforehand was great. Now it's not the same. So I'm going to stick to my gut feeling. And I feel really proud that I've stuck to my gut. And um, yeah, that's it. So uh, is what it is. And uh, we'll go again at some point. And, um, but what I don't want is people feel sorry for me. You know, trust me, I'm not sitting here licking my wounds, crying about it. It's rubbish, but it's, I've got lots of other stuff going on. And um, I'm a, I'm a very positive person. And I actually now, with not having this hanging over me, I feel really motivated. Like, right, what now? How can we expand the business more? What we're going to do? You know, it's, uh, it's all good. Yeah. And, you know, quickly, Andrew, BMW, we've got to remember, have been brilliant to you and they still are. I'm assuming you'll still be involved with BMW? I really hope so. You know, I, I'm, the work that BMW and, and some individuals last year put in over the winter was it, it restored my faith in the fact you can do a good job in motorsport and get rewarded for it. And, you know, in F1 these days, budget often outweighs talent. And it really restored the fact that you built, you know, I'd only been there three years, uh, seven, yeah, three years and built relationships with these people so much so that they were going above and beyond what they should have probably had to do to keep me in the seat. So the thing is, like with all these deals and my sponsor deals and stuff, it isn't just the touring cars I have, you know, I do a lot of other stuff. There's lots of other benefits to working with myself, you know, but I, I, I build friendships. So I'm friends with all these people. So just because I'm not doing touring cars, doesn't suddenly mean I'm not friends with all these people. And so hopefully I will continue to work with, with BMW. I'm, I'm proud to, to wear their colors, you know, I, I'm proud of it. So, um, and hopefully we can go and have some on their driving experiences next year or something, have some good old ding dongs giving passenger rides, but it's, um, it's just right for me this year and uh, I have to do what's what's right for me and um, I'm not going to go into a season at this level not being fully invested in it because I'm worrying about stuff so uh, that that's just that's just it but uh, yeah always um, always will be proud to have done what I've done with with BMW and uh, yeah who knows what'll happen in the future but I'm not going to be I, Dan Mayo actually rang me the championship coordinator earlier had a really good chat with him and he said, look, don't be a stranger. And I won't be. I'm not going to be one of these people that goes, oh, touring cars is rubbish now just because I'm not involved. No, touring cars is great. There's ups and downs. There's been times I've loved it. And there's been times I've come home and thought, I'm done with it. But on the whole, I've done 12 years in the top championship. I've won it. I've won multiple races. I'm not going to suddenly just go, oh, it's a load of rubbish now because I'm not in it. I'll go to some of the races, go and see some of the friends I've made over the years. Yeah, you, know, you make some great friends and you meet some complete prats, but on the majority, it, it's um, it, it's friendly people. And uh, so, yeah, I'm not going to be a stranger to the championship, and uh, I'll watch with interest and uh, and see who can come out in top on top, which in which I think will be a bit of a up and down year. And in terms of it'll be a, a tough season with the calendar. Mm, definitely, mate. And listen, I, I don't think you could have explained that any better. And the respect you had has just gone up 10 times to, you know, from everyone. I'm seeing all the messages come through. There's a minute and 10 seconds remaining, AJ. So I'm going to let you go, mate. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for being so honest. I knew it would be exactly that. But uh, I'll let you just say bye to all your fans. You will see them. And in particular, Shaz Babes. Yes, I much love to Shaz Babes. Um, but you're probably going to get me right telling off now because bath time has just finished. <laughs> so cheers for that. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to start cooking dinner. Um, but yeah, just thanks for the support. You know, whether you, uh, the thing I love about sport and touring cars, you're going to have fans and you're going to have people who don't like you. But I love the fact that people get so invested in it. So if you supported me, thank you. If you've loved it when I haven't won, thank you. It's all part of sport. And uh, yeah, I, I'll, uh, I'm sure I'll be at a track soon. And um, well, I'll definitely be at a track soon, just not with touring cars. But uh, yeah, we'll, uh, I'll be out in the historics and all sorts. But uh, 
yeah, it's been good. It's been a hell of a ride. So thank you. Stop, man. Thanks, AJ. Peace out. Peace out. Peace out. Peace out. Peace out. See ya.